Hey Rich, Tennessee Homestead, how the heck are you today? Yeah, I know, the rumors have been out there, I'm bad, I'm sick, I am uh, fell off the face of the earth, I've been abducted by aliens, you know, all of it's there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, nope, yeah, I'm going to tell you the, the whole story today. Anyway, get, uh, get yourself a cup of coffee or a, a tea or whatever you're drinking this morning, drag up a chair, we'll cover it, and... Uh, Oh, it's good talking to you again, so better make it fast. I shortened up the intro so you won't have as much time to dawdle in the kitchen. All right, see y'all in a bit. Okay, let's begin at the beginning on this thing. This is one of those hard videos to make because I'm kind of a private person. So, you know, I'm gonna share some things with you of what I've been going through. And as, as a bunch of you that have stayed with the channel uh, and were there back from even the beginning, uh, you find that uh, I went through a, a pretty nasty divorce and, and uh, uh, things of this nature. Well, that's, you know, uh, getting a divorce is a little like a uh, death in the family kind of thing. It really is. Uh, it's tough on you. And while I thought I was doing pretty good with it, I really did. And then I realized, uh, not really, okay? So I was bottling a lot of stuff up and I just wasn't happy. I really wasn't. Kind of going through my day-to-day -day life routine, you know, had my job, which I'd volunteer for all the overtime I could get and things of this nature and just kept myself busy. Got to the point to where my life pretty much revolved around working and sleeping. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it was kind of, kind of tough. And during all that time, I dated and things of that nature, and uh, none of that worked out real well. Uh, one, I think, uh, it was just too fresh, you know. And I would look at the relationship and start seeing things in it that, uh, I guess the best way to say it, I, I saw in my marriage and backed up, okay? Even some of the good things caused me to back up. <sighs> Silly, yeah, but uh, that's what finally made me realize that, uh, I, you know, I wasn't through this. So uh, I started working harder on getting through it. And one of the things you learn is, is much like a, a loss of a spouse and death, you, you, uh, you got to go through the grieving process, you know. And the, the thing about um, divorce and stuff of that nature is you also have to go through if you're going to get through it. Now, some people just transfer it over to hate of their ex-spouse okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. <sighs> That's not good, okay? Hate burns you up. You know, it's, it's a lot harder on you than it is on your ex-spouse, trust me. So you got to get to the point of where you're good with it, okay? And where you find peace in your life and you're ready to move along. So with that in mind, uh, divorce is tough whether you're, you know, 25 or uh, 45 or 55. Uh, when you're in your 60s, restarting your life is something that it becomes a, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? Okay. Let's face it. You know, most folks start their, start their lives out after college and build on it from there and, and so forth. You have setbacks and things of this nature, but pretty much that's where you're at with it. When you're getting ready to enter into those golden years and suddenly you find yourself in that kind of a situation, 
of do I want to restart my life? It comes down to some hard decisions, okay? And there's times you got to talk yourself out of, no, I don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this. Luckily, the Lord was sitting on my shoulder, okay? And kind of keeping me in line. But it sent me on a, on a journey. Uh, I got back into my grandparents' and great-grandmother's religions. Uh, religions, they are spiritual, they're Native American. They do believe in Christ, by the way, because even their tribe's uh, history uh, talked about this man, okay? And that uh, came and taught them taught their ancestors to live at peace with the earth and all the animals and their fellow man. So even though as a people they didn't learn that real well, uh, <laughs> they lived at peace with the earth and the animals. It was their fellow man they kept having problems with. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were kind of a warring people. Uh, anyway, but once you start developing that kind of a mindset, more spiritual, and you really understand and begin to understand and study, what is God? I, I really, you know, it says seeking. Okay, and a lot of folks think that means praying a lot. Okay, well, it does to some degree, but it also, you need to go find out what and who God is exactly so that you know. Okay? And once you understand who he is and what he is, you begin to go, wait a minute. Now this leads me over in this direction too. And so, yeah, it, uh, it got kind of interesting. I think I'd done a video uh, a while back on uh, uh, metaphysics and, and uh, quantum physics and things of this nature that I got studying. And that brought up a lot of questions which I went back to scripture to find answers to and found out that, wow, <laughs> it's scriptural. <laughs> but that sent me on my search to find the Father and to get to know him better. Now, don't get me wrong. God and I don't have coffee in the morning, okay? But I, I've come to a different realization of who and, and what he is. And I, I think my... My grandparents had it pretty much right on. Their spirituality. God was everything and every every fiber of this planet, everything in this planet was God. He was the great spirit that brought it all together. <coughs> Made sense to me. But anyway, not going to get into a bunch of that with you. Uh, just know that it took some time, a lot of research, not a lot of research in the subject. Doesn't make me an expert. Nope. But uh, I've learned some pretty fascinating things uh, about the universal laws of God and things of this nature. He made promises to us. You do this, I'll do that. You know, a little uh, this for that. And it's fascinating how it helps, okay? But we gotta be born again, okay? We gotta renew who we are. And who we are, even though we like to not do that, is an accumulation of all of our life's experiences, okay? And our little subconscious minds take that and go, wow, that's who you are. And if you don't want to be that accumulation of all your life's experiences, then you've got to change your subconscious mind. And that is a very tedious job. You've got to convince it. It's going to argue with you. Okay? It's going to keep trying to take you back. But the rewards are, are there. You find your peace. You know, I've, I've been told that you have really three major sections of your brain conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your divine mind, your spirit, okay? And God wants us to walk in the spirit, 
mind and have it control the subconscious and conscious mind. you find it throughout Scripture if you really sit and look. He wants us to walk and to think and to act to the best of our ability to meet these things, uh, to be the kind of person that our Christ was. Yeah, interesting, huh? So that's a lot of studying. And you start really finding out a lot about the mind and psychology, and you know it's kind of interesting to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I'm no expert. Let me stress that to you again. I still slip up, okay? But it's a battle. It's a daily battle, uh, and one that I'm uh, pretty happy with the results of so far. I'm at peace. I've gotten through the grief. I hold no ill will really toward anybody, and. With that, I can move on, you know, in relationships and friendships and so forth. So that took a lot of time, folks. In the process, I was running all over the country, working my tush off and everything that I could do to make money. But now I'm back in Tennessee. Matter of fact, I'm back up in the area that I grew up in, up in the northern section of the state. No longer a flatlander. I'm in the hills again. So the hillbillies come home, all right? The woods and the, you know, the nature surrounds you. Now I'm living in a, not really a suburban area, but we're, we're still pretty rural, but we got neighbors and it's pretty doggone good ones too. Um, which is, is a lot of fun, you know, having neighbors that are like-minded to some degree, uh, fellow across the street, great guy. Tim and his wife are just wonderful people. Uh, ain't no sense in pressing them on stuff like prepping and so forth because well, they're just not going to go there. <laughs> okay. Just didn't going to happen. Very modern family, younger people. Uh, yeah. So they know where I'm at. I know where they're at, and I'll respect their bounds, and they respect mine, and we really don't deal with it a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, as we get into the homesteading on this place. We'll be sharing maters and eggs and, you know, so forth with them. Uh, good people. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying the area. I really am. Back on my own place now. Don't have a lot of land. You know, it's just a couple acres. Got some woods. Uh, not much. Probably about a quarter to a half acre of woods. A uh, bunch of old outbuildings I'm going to be tearing down and rebuilding new structures on. Um, things of this nature. Um, so it'll be fun. Uh, going to do some experimental gardening and, and things of this nature. So yeah, it ought to be uh, something I can share with you. That was another reason for my kind of going. Yeah. I felt kind of hypocritical. I got a lot of knowledge to share with homesteaders. But because I wasn't hands-on physically doing it, I felt hypocritical, you know. Um, it's like, wow, you know, what am I doing telling folks how to do this? Things are changing, okay? The weather's changing, things of this nature. But who am I to tell them what's going to grow and what's not going to grow? Okay, well, I did do some container garden, or container growing this year, just so I could have some good old homegrown maters and some green peas. <laughs> That's about all I did. Got some nice rose bushes going too. But uh, we're planning on putting in some fruit trees and, and got a couple apple trees out there already uh, that the people that had the place before never pruned. So I've got some of that to do. But uh, yeah, little, little things uh, that I could share with you, okay? Plus, I figure uh, I had worked on some educational videos. Never did really complete them uh, because of my mindset at the time. But uh, I want to get those completed and something to share with you and so forth. Um, some of the things that are changing in like the cattle markets and stuff of this nature where I can give you some heads up on uh, how to prepare for what's coming down the pike at you. All right. Now we got some changes coming. I guess if I had to give you my best piece of advice today, no matter where you're at, 
I don't care if all you got is a balcony on your patio at your apartment. You better start growing food. Okay. It's not looking good. Every indicator out there is not looking good. And it's not like, well, I, yeah, I plan to get a little piece of land and in a couple of years I can do this and in a few years I'm going to be doing that. Uh, if you don't start supplementing your food source, yeah, the prices you're going to have to be paying to feed yourself are going to strip away your ability to do that. That's it. Uh, people used to laugh when they said people in Japan are paying 10 and 15 dollars a pound for hamburger. Is that crazy? Stand by. You're going to find out it's not. I had done those uh, GMO uh, videos. And I, I guess probably what I started out looking at was just the health issues. But it also led me around of what are these companies doing? And the problem is now is the things that I said it looks like they're trying to do. By golly, they're doing it. And they're doing it with a great deal of success. Uh, getting a little scary out there as far as food. This year, our crops are pitiful. Uh, we're going to see some pretty major increases. Things of this nature. But we'll save those for other videos, okay? This one's just to let you know that I've uh, took a spiritual journey and needed to clear my head out. Uh, I had to get the answer to the question, do I want to start again? I, I think, Danny, if you're watching this, you'll understand that. You come to that point where you go, am I ready to do this again? It's a hard question to ask and to ask, you know, to, to answer and to answer honestly. And I didn't much care for the answer I was putting out. And that was, no, I don't. I really don't. I had to bring myself to where I was at peace with myself, with my lot in life, with my, most importantly, with my father. Okay. Now I've got that. Made that full circle. And reluctant to make too many big changes, uh, I'm a little more cautious man than I was when it comes to things like relationships and stuff of that nature. I pretty much stand back and uh, judge people by their fruits, you know, who they are. And uh, don't commit too much of me until I'm comfortable with who they are. A lot of prayer, so forth. I'm friendly to everybody. All right. Until you make me not friendly. <laughs> I, do, I still got a temper. Trust me in that. Uh, rarely is it cut loose. you got to really push some buttons. But uh, getting at peace with my life was where I've been. Uh, finding my comfort and my drive and my will to push on and to keep going and to do more. Okay, uh, like I said, this little place here that I got, a couple acres, it's not a big deal. It's not going to feed me, that's for darn sure. But I am saving my pennies and looking at land. Uh, see what I can pick up in the area. That I can put some cattle on and things of this nature. I am going to put some chickens out here, uh, things of this nature. So, it's going to be an interesting journey. You know, I... I when I first left the farm, I said, I'll be like you guys just starting out. And really, uh, to a lot of you, that's that's what you're doing, is trying to get a uh, homestead established and so forth. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, getting back to where I can feed myself. And through hard times, not have to worry about it. So that's my goals. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, like I said, I'm going to run up some of these educational videos to try to help you all out. And try to just show you what I'm doing. And I'll show you my successes as well as the times I fall flat on my face in the mud. Okay? Uh, nobody's perfect. Everybody has things that just don't work. <laughs> okay? 
and in today's you uh, you're in the middle of a big huge experiment everything's changing the weather's changing chemicals that are being sprayed around are changing a lot that's going on it makes it harder and harder to sustain yourself um, I'll kind of get back in there and get to looking at it and see what has to be done and do my best um, so I hope you join me if so hey hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell especially because YouTube's getting terrible about this and I'm sure I'll step out of line with YouTube at some point and get all kinds of monetized. I've still got two stupid videos that they've got demonetized. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> One of them was Molly working the cows. <laughs> it's like, really? I guess it was cruelty to animals or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know. So, and I'm thinking about setting up a Patreon account and uh, doing something like that, too. So, Because let me tell you something. I'd like to put a large greenhouse in uh, our back section of the land. That's going to take more money than this old boy's got right now. So anything I can get to put together to make a few bucks, I'm at it. And, you know, retirement's around the corner. You know what I'm saying? So i got to get busy. Anyway, I do love and appreciate you guys, and, and especially you folks that have been hanging around and, uh, you know, stuck through it thick and thin. Uh, your special group. And uh, no, Danny, I won't run up any videos to uh, interfere with porch type. I know I'd be playing second fiddle there anyway. It'd be a waste of time. Love you guys. I appreciate you. And I'm back. It's Rich, Jesse. Hope you're having a blessed week. We'll talk to you soon.